Oh hey guys, what's up? Welcome to your 98th Android tutorial for the new Boston. And again, what we're going to do in this tutorial is work with some data, um, like I said, for the next few tutorials, uh, because it's pretty uh, it's a pretty crucial thing um, for most applications. You want to save some files, save some data somewhere, and so I'm going to kind of go through different ways you can do that. Now what we've worked with is the shared preferences, which is good for key and pair values, um, or key, I'm sorry, key value pairs for the most part. So if you want to save just a variable, have that variable change and update it, um, we can do that. Now another way we can ins save some data or save some files um, is again internal storage, which is pretty similar to shared preferences. But uh, I just want to show you guys some more stuff that we can do. And uh, this data will be saved internally uh, in the internal storage. So what's going to happen is if they uninstall our application, it is going to be deleted, this internal storage that we're going to create here, or this file. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our class. And don't worry, we don't need to create a new uh, XML layout, finally. So uh, we're just going to use the same one that we did from the other class as well. I'm just going to move this up here. Um, get started and as you can see I implemented the on click listener so it's nothing new there I have a ton of imports so you guys don't need to worry about um, so what we're gonna do within our on create method we're gonna set our content view to what was it r dot layout dot oh man shared preferences it's gonna be the same layout same kind of stuff that we worked with when we did shared preferences so now what we can also do is we can open up our shared preferences class just to save some time and we can copy this setup variables method here actually let's just kinda of copy everything um, from here which is our on click method which is just a switching case and our setup variables method copy that and we're going to go over to internal data and we're going to since we copied our on click method we're just going to delete the one that it set up for us and hit paste and we're going to delete uh, whatever is within our save and our load button so now that we've copied it uh, we just need to call this method set up variables within our on create method so it kind of initializes all of our variables there and uh, we also want to add the references to our edit text and our text view so we'll do that above our class. And a text view called data results. And there we go. We pretty much have everything set up for our tutorial now. Now how we're going to work with the internal storage is we're going to create a file output stream to write our data. And then we're going to create a file input stream to read our data. So let's first, uh, just for this tutorial, we're going to write some data. Um, but let's first create our file output stream. So again, we want this to be a variable that we can use throughout our whole class. So we're going to say file output stream, like this, and we're going to call it FOS, or FOS. FOS. And uh, within our setup variables, we're also just going to quickly um, create it and uh, and then close it for the most part so we know that it exists and we also want to have a file name just like the last tutorial so we're gonna set up a string that's gonna be our file name and we're gonna say string file name equals internal string something like that so what we need to do is we need to create this file output stream within our onCreate method, set it up to our file name, and set up how we want to write to it, and all that good stuff. So we're going to do that within our onCreate method. Again, we have this method called setup variables. So we're just going to set it up within that method, uh, which is going to be called within our onCreate. We're just going to set it up and then close it for the most part. So we created this file output stream. Again, output is how we write data. And we're going to set that equal to something called or using a method called open file output and what takes within its parameters is the file name again we just set up that variable as our string reference uh, called internal internal string and then we also want to say the way that we want to write to it for the most part so context 
dot mode private because we don't want anyone to see this file name we want to only be able to access it within code for the most part so we're going to use the default you know mode private and it's giving us an error because when we open data or try and write to data uh, load data all that good stuff it's not always you know it's one of those sketchy things we have to surround it with a try and a catch clause so we can easily just hover over the air and say surround with try and catch clause so I'm going to click that and now it's going to catch if a file has not been found for the most part exception and then print it to the stack trace what we also want to do is after we create this file output stream we just want to close it so anytime we open it we need to close it uh, so we're just going to do that quickly fos dot close and there we go um, and again it's going to say hey we we are trying to close it we need to surround this with a try and catch as well but since it's already within the try bracket what we're going to do is we're going to say add a catch clause to the surrounding try um, and as you can see once we click that it adds this input output exception so we have two things within our try bracket and two exceptions that it can catch again file not found and the file exception or input output exception so again it just prints it to the stack trace and that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, we didn't write anything we basically just created our file output stream um, you, using the reference of our file name saying we want to you know write to it privately and then we close it within our on create method so in the next tutorial I'll show you guys how to actually write to this stream and and it's gonna be pretty simple for the most part uh, and I'll catch you then have a good one